Salmon, the Assistant Executive Director, Donovan Campbell, our Technical Officer, Michelle Francis, who is responsible for monitoring compliance and customer service at the Commission, um, Don Dobson, who is our Information Officer, and other persons here from the Broadcasting Commission who are supporting uh, this forum. This is a this is a continuation of efforts we have been making over um, the past several years and intensified, I would say, over the past three or so years to look beyond uh, the strict legal issues we tend to deal with at the Broadcasting Commission and to try to help as far as possible with capacity development. And this is born of a recognition that the cable sector in Jamaica is not homogenous. We have persons who are operating at a highly sophisticated um, technical level with a lot of capacity. And then we have others who are providing very valuable service to the people of Jamaica. But like many of our small and medium-sized enterprises, challenge to find capital and to retool and to invest in training. And although that is not really a part of the Broadcasting Commission's mandate, we don't operate in a vacuum. We operate in Jamaica, we understand the realities of Jamaica, and as far as is possible within our means, we're going to do what we can to support um, the sector we regulate, and in this case, the uh, cable industry. Uh, persons, many of you in this room, who are in fact pioneers of this industry and are prototypes of human system interaction. Typical Jamaicans who turn our hands and make fashion. So we understand the struggles, but we so understand that we are operating in a very, very different environment. An environment in which there is exponential innovation, but also disruption. And innovation has always occurred in human development. But I think it is fair to say that the extent to which disruption is accompanying contemporary innovation is something that we are not very accustomed to, apart from the Industrial Revolution that we have read about in the history books. We are really seeing a lot of disruption. And this disruption requires very different approaches, dismantling of models, and a very different intelligence. And we are all on a learning curve. It's a great pleasure this morning to have one of the world's thoughts and experts on some of the issues we will be interrogating here today and issues that we don't have time to interrogate. Um, Steve, Stephen Harris is a respected international subject matter expert in telecommunications, high tech, and information technology systems engineering, and he has a proven track record of success. For those of you who are familiar with the Society of Cable Telecommunications Engineers and the International Society of Broadband Experts, he has a reputation which precedes him. At the SCTE, ISBE, <coughs> Stephen is responsible for the tremendous growth in training content, running boot camps and certification programs for over 100,000 telecommunications professionals, covering a wide range of issues, including fiber deep, DAA, FTTX, 
doxis, Wi-Fi, routing, switching, virtualization, IPv6, Ethernet, business services, MPEG, Linux, head-end installation, and a range of other um, technical areas. And he's particularly skilled at delivering in not very technical ways, highly complex technical content, which we hope will be his style today. Prior to SCTE, he was the regional um, principal technical instructor for learning and development at Comcast uh, Freedom Region. And during that um, tenure, he was responsible for developing new training content for 3,500 Comcast employees who were being transitioned to digital video, VIP, IP networks, fiber optics, and DOCSIS systems. He's a sought after um, speaker, appears on many technical panels. Some of you might have met him in webinars, and he has presented at various industry events, and we know some of those events, um, persons in this room, have been able to um, attend, such as the annual uh, cable conference. So it's really a have him here today. He has also authored numerous technical papers and presentations. I wonder whether we could switch the uh, microphone, uh, Jason. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm Jamaican welcome to Stephen Harris. Okay, okay. Thank you, Cordell, and, and thank you everyone for having me today. How are we doing? Good? Good? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and, and as Cordell was sharing, it is a very challenging time in cable. So many things have changed. Um, even the roles that I've seen in the last 17 years in cable have just morphed from an analog business of video into now we're doing cloud-based video. So I hope to share along uh, throughout my presentation where video is going, where data is going, where internet's going, where voice is going, but really what's the future? So I will talk about those different things. Um, I have my email address here, um, sharris at sete.org. I have brought business cards, so feel free throughout the day uh, to stop by and I'll give you a card if you want, you're interested in anything um, that I have to share today. So I just want to share my, my major role in the society. I think Cordell did a uh, great job of the introduction. Um, one of my primary roles is the development of training content. We actually just started a brand new framework for training content all online. Uh, one of the challenges with so, with so many people so busy today working the networks and out in the field making sure that you're offering those next generation services is when do you get training? And what we did is really focus on a training platform that is available online, and you can actually do practical activities. We call it virtual learn. But that's, that's been the challenge. When do I get training? Can I bring, and then bringing everybody in to get training is a challenge as well. So that's one of my focus areas. I do speak uh, on different technologies, all the newer technologies that you might have been hearing, hearing of, like DOCSIS 3.1, FiberDex, FiberDeep, distributed access architectures, and a lot of other acronyms. A lot of other acronyms. So I've, I'll try to define those acronyms as I go along. Um, I do write for Broadband Library. I mention this because you can go to broadbandlibrary.com, and these are magazines that are dedicated to the cable industry. So if you're interested in any of these new technologies or you're interested in what's coming next, visit broadbandlibrary.com, and you can read the articles on all these different technologies that I'm sharing. Of course, we'd like to have you a, as a member of SCTE, and you get all kinds of stuff, but uh, we'll talk about that later. And I do deliver the training. So I, I think we are at 725 modules of training content. When I started with the SCTE nine years ago, I would say we were lucky to have 50. So it's been quite a, uh, 
uh, what would we say, a lot, a lot of work, a lot of uh, midnight hours going into the development of this training. Um, unfortunately, when, you, when you're the one who develops all kinds of training, sometimes you're the one that has to teach that training. So I do go out and do the boot camps. And um, my most, most recent one, which is gaining popularity, is cybersecurity. So you're probably all familiar with uh, the, the issues with security around your networks, the issues with customers worrying about their security, whether it's just banking or just everyday activities. Uh, cybersecurity is a really big threat. And I was up in Canada just sharing some of the statistics with them, and they, it was eye-opening what was going on. And I do work in our standards. SCT has a standards organization as well. And we have 300 plus standards, everything from the connector, how do we insert television ads into a uh, video stream, um, Doxis, uh, or even some, some video technologies like Mocha, uh, which allows us to do whole whole, whole home uh, DVR services in, in the house. So you can share content from your living room, digital video recorder or player up into a, a bedroom or another location within the residence. So I work on those as well. And this is just a description. I just wanted to point out a couple key things here. We're going to cover it in three parts. There's a lot of material. Like I said, there's a lot of acronyms. But I would like this to be interactive along the way. So if you have a quick question, let's, let's handle those quick questions. If you have a detailed question, we're going to have a discussion. Uh, we have time on the agenda for that. But really, we're going to focus on network capacity and reliability. One of the most important things in, t in today's um, ecosystem, it, and, and especially with competition, is reliability. And you know this, if, if you have a car that's not reliable, you're, not, you're not, probably not going to buy that brand car the next time. Or if you have even a appliance in your home that's not reliable, are you going to go buy that brand again? No, no. You're going to say, well, what else is there? And that's the same thing with cable. Um, I was watching TV last night and the guide wasn't working. No guide data, right? So I'm changing channels and I'm like, oh, what's on this channel? No guide data, I had video. But that's, that's this little things like that is a differentiator. Well, my competitor has guide data. My competitor has a nice way of displaying the channels, nice channel lineup. So those little things make a difference. And then when the service doesn't work, that's a big deal. Especially, you know, I live up in New Jersey, right next to Philadelphia. So if you've heard of the Eagles, they just won the Super Bowl. And what happens when the Super Bowl feed goes out in the middle of the game? What happens when the soccer, the World Cup soccer game goes out in the middle of the game? Your customers are very, very unhappy. So reliability, capacity is very, very important, and it, that funnels to everything we do. Everything has to work. It has to work the first time. The installation has to be correct the first time. You can't keep going back to the customer, reinstalling, fixing, swapping out materials. It has to be done the first time. And then the access network. This is how we deliver services you know, from our head ends, our hub sites, our central offices to our customers. It has to also be reliable. It also has to expand with the future. We're not saying replace the whole entire thing. What we're saying is it has to evolve, and we'll talk about that. And then, obviously, the changing landscape in the home. I'll talk a little bit about Consumer Electronics Show. I was there this year and what's happening. Um, I could tell you Internet of Things is the most uh, thought after uh, topic. And then we'll talk a little bit about the future. Where is the future happening? So I wanted to start off before I dove into session one is just a little bit about what's going on in Jamaica connectivity. So there's some good things here. I have the actual map here on the left-hand side, and I have a better laser here. Let's see if I can get it right here. But the map on the side here basically shows the connectivity of the Caribbean. We are well connected, especially Jamaica has five connection points um, within all, all parts of the island. And uh, Kingston is, is the actual internet connection point. That's how we connect to the internet. But you have five different connection points. So right there shows me that we have redundancy on the island. Very, very important. We don't want to lose connectivity to the internet. Our customers want to do their 
YouTube and any other uh, type of video service, but that's very, very important. So I wanted to kind of share that with you. We're well connected when it comes to um, the island. And then a little bit about internet. So I pulled some, uh, with the assistance of the Broadcasting Commission, some uh, World Bank statistics. And also I, I pulled in some Cisco Visual Network Index statistics. I would suggest that's another excellent reference for everybody in this room, is it, when you just a quick Google search, you can download the Cisco, Cisco Visual Network Index. It gives you insight to where um, technology is going. But a couple key points that I want to point out, internet use. So if you look at the internet use of Jamaica versus maybe United States, UK, and Argentina, we're at 45% internet use. What I can tell you about that data in three years from now, that's not going to be 45%. What do you think? Is it going to go up? Absolutely. You might be close to 76%. But look at UK, 94% connectivity. So we're, you know, even in the States, we're not totally connected yet. We're working very hard to do that. But it's going to continue to grow. And as that continues to grow, you, you'll see on the far right-hand side, the average internet devices per household. In the U.S., 10 devices. 10 devices connect to the internet. You would think that the U.K. would have more than that since they have so much connectivity. Some of the reason might be that uh, we've been doing some um, Internet of Things already. We do actually home lifestyle and home security. So I have thermostats that connect to the Internet. I probably are, uh, you would call me hyper-connected. I have a 13-year-old daughter who's hyper-connected. She's got a dozen devices herself. But every, th every, every device that I can find, um, I've changed out in the home for IP. So my lights are, I have little um, wireless signals. I can actually cha change lights. I can control my whole house from here. And what's interesting about that is once you get that first light controlled by your smartphone, you're going to want to control everything. And that spreads. So think about here on the island, if I can control my thermostat, I can control my light, what else can I control? And you're going to think about uh, all these different things. And at Consumer Electronics Show, cars. You can control your car from your smartphone and all different things within it. You can see the Internet bits per second. You know, in the U.S., everybody thinks, well, everybody's one gigabit per second, 1,000 megabits per second. Not, not true. Uh, if, if you go across the entire country, the average is about 126 kilobits. So it's true on the East Coast, yes, we might have more high connectivity. Um, I don't have a gig service. But I can tell you I don't have 126 kilobits either. But you can see that this is a growth area as well. So we're pushing close to um, UK where at least everybody has about 500 kilobits per second on average. Affordability, Jamaica being... Uh, about $23, US, UK being probably the cheapest here, Argentina the most expensive, most expensive there. So what can we learn from this? Really, uh, if, if we say Jamaica today, everybody has at least one device, that's going to grow 5, 10, 15 devices. It's going to continue to grow. And people are going to want to use these devices on the network. So we need to be prepared with a network that allows them to use these devices. And then some of the technologies on the right in Jamaica that's um, the most prevalent is coax cable, fiber to the X, which is fiber to the curb, fiber to the business, fiber to the multiple dwelling unit or apartment, fiber to the home. That's what fiber to the X is. And the next thing next to that is called X passive optical network. You can do passive optical network with Ethernet. Um, you can use GPON. Those are the two most popular. And then I'll, I'll introduce you to another technology called radio frequency over class. And then WiMAX. WiMAX um, it was a technology most promising, very promising, and, and it got to version 2 before Wi-Fi kind of took over. But WiMAX may still be used out there in pockets on the network, but really Wi-Fi has taken over. I'll talk about that. 
I wanted to share Nielsen's Law. What we, what we see here with Nielsen's Law is that internet uh, growth is tracking uh, along with that. And basically, Nielsen's Law says that 50% CAGR, compound annual growth, every year. And you see the way we're tracking, in 1982, I had a 300-baud dial-up modem. And that's how I kind of got started in the internet. But I had a phone line that I would connect. And over time, we can see that the internet growth is continuing, continuing. And here we are, about 50 to 100 megs. Uh, I've seen 100 meg service offered here in Jamaica, which is very good. And moving to one gig service. So there's a lot of there's a couple technologies we can use to get to a one gig service, but that is something that all operators are kind of working towards. But as you saw on the previous slide, it's not everywhere in the United States. It's not everywhere in the United Kingdom or in Argentina. And where we kind of are with uh, Jamaica, we're kind of fall right in that line, about 50 to 100 megabits per second. But it's, but if you think about it, it, it's not, it's not available to all folks on the island because it could be quite expensive for them, right? So we have to work on costs at the same time, try to work on improving the delivery of the network. And then a picture of overall Jamaica compared to other Caribbean countries. Uh, what's interesting here is the British Virgin Islands uh, is actually the slowest listed here, but Jamaica's doing quite well. About overall average, and this is from uh, Okala, uh, nine megabits per second down, 3.5 megabits per second up. So that's our average speed uh, on the island. And you can see that uh, Trinidad, a little bit higher, as well as uh, maybe some Bahamas and Barbados. And here's some ITU data, uh, International Telecommunication Union. The International Telecommunication Union is um, the organization behind GPON, Gigabit Passive Optical Networks. Uh, and they do a lot of work in, this in, uh, in our industry as well. But what we can clearly see here is that we're tracking along with the World Bank data. And we're about 45% um, of internet users. And it kind of just shows you how um, some of the, you know, like Bahamas, 70%. So we might be able to learn um, some information from the Bohemians as far as what they're doing different than, than us here. But uh, just kind of wanted to show you where we are here versus some of the other locations. Um, before I dive into session one, changing landscape in the home, our first session, the concept of content. So what I showed you, a lot of internet information here. And you're like, well, why did you show us all the internet stuff? What about video, right? What about video? The internet's very, very important to video. But video is very important as well. And uh, what the growing theme is and, and things that uh, folks want to talk about is content. And the content for us in the United States and for everywhere I go and visit, you know, whether it's South America or Europe, is, is content is what we call content is king. It means everybody is trying to scramble to get content. In the U.S., companies are buying companies left and right. Right now, uh, Fox is going to, uh, once Fox is for sale and their, and their uh, Comcast said yesterday they would be happy to step in to buy Fox and to buy all that media content. And Disney is like, yes, I would like to buy it as well. AT&T is the current bidder. But the point is, all these companies see something in content. They all want the content. Whether it's Netflix develops their own content, that's why you get Netflix. Um, there's a new Star Trek. I'm a Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie. It's on CBS. In order to get it, I have to subscribe to CBS outside my cable package. And they're seeing success with that. I, I won't do it. <laughs> but, but the point is that the content is in all these different buckets. And I'll tell you how the cable operators are bringing that content together. But content is very, very important. Um, so you, we'll talk about that.